Hey guys, we got an awesome episode today. Um, today we got Haley and Victoria <laughs> on Saint Podcast. Ciao. Thanks for coming out, guys. Ciao. Thank you. Thank you Thanks so much. Yeah, yeah. Wow, hosting Saint X Podcast. Chance yeah. of Breeze. Yeah. Unreal. What a collaboration, may yeah. I say. Honestly, I must say myself. But on a real note, guys, thank you for tuning back in to Saint Podcast. Another Tuesday. Another Tuesday. We got Chance Labrie here. Thanks for uh, having me. Nice drummer from Falset. Yeah. Love to see it. Let's go. Yeah, I'm excited, guys. <laughs> Thanks for having me out. <laughs> He's a great fucking drummer. He drums Top those tier. drums. I try. Yeah, we love to see it. Huh. Um, thanks for making the drive out, man. Of course. We're excited. We're Anything for you, too? Oh, uh, Maron. Maron. <laughs> Don't gas us up. <laughs> it's also very nice to see you again. Of we course. Go, we go way back. Yeah. It's a chance. Tell, well, nice to see him again. <laughs> tell us about yourself. Tell the audience. Tell us. I want to know. All right. Well, I'm Chance Labrie. I'm the drummer of Falset. <laughs> and, um... Jesus, okay. I'm t I'm 24 years old. My sin number is uh, five two four seven nine five. Ooh, I got too close there. To the we'll bleep we'll it have out. We'll bleep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, thanks for having me on, guys. I don't have a uh, a lot to talk about how today. How did how did what got you interested in music? Like, how are you who you are today in your band? That's well, obviously, you know. Great question. Yeah, great question. First off, but obviously, you know, growing up with uh, my dad being in the industry. Mm -hmm. um that you know paved the road for me to get into music um just you know some some kids grow up on farms you know i grew up on me the road. shit kickers i actually did grow <laughs> up on a farm yeah and then and then other kids grow up um in the rock and roll lifestyle on That's on tour so sick yeah well, it's a pretty unique story on its own though like not a lot of kids can say mm -hmm. they no. grew up on a tour bus it's pretty, we'll, it's we'll pretty dive into dope. that we'll dive pretty into fucking it dope. for sure yeah your dad's yeah. a fucking rock star dude that's cool yeah did you did you find that he shaped you to kind of fit in the music world or was it something that always genuinely just interested you no you know those like hockey dads that like they tell their kids like you got to get into hockey yeah. and stuff my mm -hmm. dad was complete opposite he was like do whatever you want to do you know I so i just naturally found my way into music because you know i loved what he did so much and i feel like creatives and people in the entertainment industry are very flexible like that when it comes to like they they understand the world of creativity and what it's like to find yourself and to be unique within yourself and to to limit yourself to kind of stick to one like if for, like you said about the hockey thing to to limit your kid to that it's almost like they don't get to explore their own interests and right. talents right so it's it's amazing that you actually found that on your own and yeah and th know. they'd also grow up to probably like hate their dad somewhat yeah. and you know like 100 yeah you got to let your kids get into it their yeah. own way and yeah. find out what they want to do themselves yeah but that's that's pretty much it is just you know being in, in that lifestyle uh i was like this is awesome i feel like a lot of people get into music and they think they know what it's all about they mm -hmm. think they know what they're getting into and then right. they're like actually i don't want to do this mm -hmm. the beautiful thing about me seeing exactly what they do is um i know exactly what it takes the kind of lifestyle the scheduling how it all works and i'm like yeah 100 percent. this is something i'd love to see myself it's a, do it's and a dedicate huge my commitment. life yeah 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 of course and yeah. your dad is the lead singer of dream theater mm -hmm. fantastic yeah amazing, amazing so what uh what inspired you to get into drumming specifically um great question i actually started playing guitar because i thought you know mm. guitarists get all the mm -hmm. ladies so <laughs> that was what <laughs> i wanted wrong. to do you know what? i feel like drummers i feel like drummers we're, are we're coming around we're coming around i like it yeah. <laughs> I, I, would, I would definitely go for the drummer oh stop it guys but yeah i got into guitar first and then um, it felt like a chore to me. I wasn't really into it. It, you know, I just had to do my practicing and then go to a guitar lesson and then do my practicing. And then um, I was watching Mike Mangini, my dad's drummer, behind the kit one day, and I was just like, "This looks like so much fun." Mm -hmm. You know, you're just hitting stuff, counting to four <laughs> or seven or twelve while yeah. you're doing it. Like that's yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So that's what got me into it. And then after that, got a drum kit. I believe I probably already had an electric drum kit at that time, just because you know, musical family mm -hmm. and stuff. But I uh, got a drum kit and just started to dedicate my whole life mm. to drumming. Uh, probably 12, 13, 14. Wow. Around wow. There. So yeah. you've only really been doing it for like 10, 11 years. 10, 12 years, something <gasps> like that. Amazing. Good for you. Yeah. And I think even last time, seriously, like, 
you know, the I started Falset, the band I'm in, um, in like 2014, 2015, which is a long time. Really? But it, it wasn't until then that I took it seriously. I mm. feel like I thought it was longer than that. I don't know why, but that's awesome. Yeah. Because really, in the grand scheme of things, that's not a lot of time. Yeah. And even like, still like we say, 2018 is when we were like officially a band, because mm-hmm. that's when we dropped our mm-hmm. first EP. Mm-hmm. So that's Crazy. not even a long time either. Yeah. yeah. It's not that long ago. Yeah. Oh, it's man. cool to see like how your music's developed as well. Like, like listening to your first album, 2018, you guys are like more like like super metal mm-hmm. right and then you kind of transformed which is cool i love yeah. love love your music yeah i feel like there's a lot of people that were happy to see that transition mm-hmm. and then a lot of people were mad to see that you know of they liked our first album a lot more um but like what i say to those people is like who knows like maybe our third or fourth album is the heaviest thing you've ever heard from us 100%. like we're not going to keep going in one direction or the other mm-hmm. we're just going to write what we want to write yeah. at that moment in time yeah. yeah and i feel like you have to kind of keep it that way because at the end of the day you're going to put music out there some people are going to rock with it and some people aren't so exactly. no matter what you put out like that's always going to be mm-hmm. and you're just the expanding the geography of like where people are listening and tuning in from right like there's always going to be people who love a certain genre people who don't love a certain genre but you're just expanding that that mm-hmm. you yeah. know of course that yeah. base that fan base um man i've tried playing drums just for fun i i play a bunch of instruments but drums is one i literally can't i can't do it you it's do it. so no man yeah. it's crazy i just can't too much too much going on yeah. i don't know how you guys do it when i see people playing drums live it's like it's mesmerizing. Wild. It's an art. Mm-hmm. It's an art too. Just like watching them do it, it's mm-hmm. crazy. Like yeah. Well, thank you. I think that it's like anything though, and like if anyone put practice into it, like anyone, 100%. anyone yeah. can do it. You're right. Yeah, like, I feel like a lot of people, they rate talent way too high. Like, talent's mm-hmm. overrated. I feel like the person that puts the most hours into something will go way further than the talented kid that yeah. had, had it all at the start. Um, it's true. 100%. So, yeah, like, drumming, if you really wanted to, if you really wanted yeah. to, you could be, like, amazing. It's like I was saying to you yesterday, Ed Sheeran's such a great example of that. Like, oh he gosh, was yeah. absolute trash. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, um, like, I've always loved music on such a deep level. I'm like, I want to sing. Obviously, I'm not gifted, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take singing lessons. Yeah. I've said that no, so many he, times because you never know. Ed right? Sheeran sounded like not Ed Sheeran whatsoever before really? he was Ed Sheeran. I didn't know about this. He was not a great singer um in the sense of just like couldn't like, couldn't hold, a, hold couldn't hold the key like he just so if he could do like, it like i'm better than he was now yeah, <laughs> right and you said you play instruments and stuff too what do you play yes uh, i play guitar piano ukulele all right. i play the violin for four years anyone ask me wow. about my music and then I, no. I just picked up the harmonica so <laughs> um all my harmonica life, really yes i love like folk music indie music oh cool cool um Music's been my my entire life. Like that's all I've ever really known. But to to play the drums has been a dream of mine, honestly. Um, and the harp. I've always wanted to learn the harp. Yeah, but like, like drums, I I feel harp. like I'm very rhythmically cool. inclined. But for some reason, like every time I go on the drums, like I can I can hold a little. If beat. you can keep a beat, then you're already like miles ahead of some I can, people. I can. But like the the whole what do you call it? like the foot the foot one? The it's kick or the, the high hat? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, hi. Can't, I can't. Yeah. I can't. Do you know those? Th- you remember in elementary school when I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's how I feel playing that's the drums. That's hard. Yeah, that is you hard. know what I'm saying. But you know how, like, when you finally get that thing, <laughs> it's like you're not even Second thinking nature. about it. It's muscle memory. Yeah. And drums is the same thing. Like, if you were to even guitarists, but like guitarists, drummers, any musician, if you were to say like, what did you just do there? They'd be like, I have no idea. Mm-hmm. It's just like a you muscle memory it. thing. Yeah. yeah. yeah if you so start right. to think about it, that's when you screw so it up. Right. right. Wow. Yeah. Go ahead and put it. I guess. Yeah. Um. So when you guys started your band, were you guys all friends or did you know each other from other shows? Yeah, how did uh, that come about? I so actually am curious. We grew up uh, going to like the same elementary school, a couple of us, like me and Zach, who are still the two original members. We went to elementary school together, nice. yes. which is really cool. And then the rest of them, like we've gone through so many members. Yeah. So like a lot of them have come and gone. But um, yeah, it was mostly just high school band kind of things. And honestly, at the time, I didn't think hey, this false set thing I'm doing right now, that's what I'm going to be doing in my 20s. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be like this career that I'm building Mm -hmm. later Mm -hmm. in my life, which is really, really cool to see something from high school turn into what I'm doing with my whole life. I mean, like you did that. Yeah, Yeah, that's amazing. We did that. that. We did that. I couldn't do it without them. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So a big thing with like our pod- podcast is like we love to hear, you know, the behind the scenes grind of everything that goes on because people probably see you guys like, wow, they're so successful. They might not see everything that goes on 
behind the closed doors, the grind you're putting in the day in, the day out, like you said, like the lifestyle that goes with that. Mm -hmm. Um, I know like you are specifically kind of like the brains behind everything. And I know you deal with like a lot of the actual like bullshit with lawyers and all that. So business side of things. The business side of things. Yeah. So like, how do you feel? Well, I first off, great question. I also don't want to sit here and act like I'm some successful mega famous musician. (laughs) So I'll just say like what has worked for me to get to where I am is like hard work, grinding, like you said. Yeah. But like, you know, you got to at some point before you start to even get into all that, you got to sit down and be honest with yourself and say, do I have something special? Am I good at what I'm doing? Is this something other people are going to actually fuck with? Mm -hmm. Is it like and then if you're like, yes, and the 10 people around you are like, yes, then you pursue it. And only then do you pursue it because everyone's you know told chase your dreams chase your dreams yes but only if it's going to be worthwhile and you're actually good at what you're doing yeah that's reality that's just being honest so after that you got to accept that like only a small portion of what you're doing is like the creative Mm -hmm. and most Mm -hmm. of it's business and forming connections networking Mm -hmm. and dealing with all that bullshit that's not the fun part of it right the fun part is creating something special with your friends Mm -hmm. and going and meeting new people and playing shows and and you know like just seeing seeing songs like oh they like this song more than that song and oh they like this album more than that album that's the fun part you know sitting behind a computer emailing paying people sourcing things advancing things that's the boring part of it but you got to be willing to put the time in and do all that as well Yeah. yeah i think that's a good point too because like with anything you love i think people sometimes expect like if you're you know burnt out and you're tired like oh i must not be doing the right thing and i think like even with this podcast we've we've seen like there's so many hours of editing and Mm -hmm. shit that goes into it that you don't like you don't anticipate that right right. you're like oh we're just gonna start a podcast hop on a mic and it's all gonna come together and like that's yeah it's like building a team of people you know like having people behind you networking like you said Mm so um I think it's like amazing to see like how far your band has come in such a short period of time and obviously that does come with like a lot of hard work which is well, thank you and you're hey, a hard-working guy same to you guys with this podcast like i've seen some clips and and it's like looking amazing audio is crisp mm, the guests you're you. having on are blowing my mind thank I'm, you like definitely the best episode is this one but yeah duh 100%. come on but like no seriously you guys are killing it yeah, for a brand yeah. new podcast it's um, awesome yeah. i mean we try our best <laughs> we yeah. Can. Yeah, yeah. um was there ever a time where you had doubts whether it was with yourself or you guys kind of all talked about not really going places or maybe doubting like the the content you were making like Just how did you kind of thing. overcome that yeah. every other week like one, one week i'll be high on life and i'll be like yeah we're gonna do this we're gonna make it and then the next week i'll be in a rut and i'll be like there's all these things we got to do all these things against us you know such a competitive uh industry, industry. and of course, yeah yeah so that's like a thing you just got to keep battling but what i've learned is like there's been so many moments in time where i've almost been like okay throwing the towel yeah fuck but it. every time i don't do that and six months later i'm like oh wow look at what we've done this past six months and mm-hmm. then six months goes by same yeah. thing mm-hmm. so just like sticking to it and uh just working through those moments mm-hmm. it's okay to doubt yourself and it's okay to be like negative about what you're doing 100%. as long as you just wake up the next day and get your to-do list checked off then you're sometimes, on the right path yeah. sometimes it's just about completing the task yeah you can't always go off of like yeah. how you feel you know exactly I'm, and and like there's mega famous people out there that are probably doubting their next release mm. when we're it's like crazy to think about yeah like yeah. it's just you know at every level you're gonna have that you know you know positive moments and negative moments doubting yourself you know i really think there's no end goal like i've i've come to realize like every time you hit a milestone you're always chasing the next and i think like that's so important in life Mm -hmm. because like when are you going to actually be satisfied you're never going to be like you know like there's these like look at kevin hart dude Hmm. the guy just like creates a new business idea every other day you know what i'm saying like he's always chasing that next level Mm -hmm. so i feel like it's like kind of cool like i like kind of climbing the ladder you know keep going well, and yeah it's it's like they you hear them say it all the time like you have to enjoy the journey mm-hmm. not the destination always and i've struggled with that a lot because i'm like uh, once i make it once i'm a rock star and touring the world and i'm rich and have everything i want then i'll be happy but it's like dude like if you're not enjoying it right now you're not going to enjoy the grind exactly. then so you yeah. got to like take a step back and be like well, do i enjoy this we talk yes about that all the time just being present and like being grateful for what you've already achieved and like really soak that in you yeah know yeah I mean? mm-hmm. and um, you're kind of living your story right now like this is the yeah. story you're gonna look back on and be like this wow like we were, we were you know like you whether whether that's like me at a successful point in music industry or 
at a successful point in a different industry and Wherever i'm i'm okay or with even that at a downfall you know what i mean where mm-hmm. it's like you weren't really at your best or you weren't at your peak and it's like those little moments is, is what's getting you to where you are now you know what i mean mm-hmm. so yeah. appreciate those times appreciate the negative times yeah. of course we um, say that with this too like who knows where the hell it's gonna go you know what i mean like it could just lead to a new door opening completely mm-hmm. might take off might not like you just really never know but i think the uncertainty in life is mm-hmm. like the cool thing like you just keep yeah and, and the connections passionate. you build throughout everything as long as you're passionate about what you do i think that's all that matters like i always say like i'd rather be paid more so like peanuts and do what I love than actually do something I actually wake up dreading and like hating and, and get paid yeah. a lot of money for mm-hmm. it. I'd hundred percent rather do something I'm passionate about like this. Like 100%. we pour in money into this and like do we really see much money in return? Not at no, all. Not no, right now at least, no. right? But it's yeah. like there's a difference. Like we love doing it. Um Mm-hmm. And uh, I feel that way about music, 100%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Music is such a, cr- like, what a yeah. joy, what a blessing to have music on this universe mm-hmm. in this time. Yeah. It's kind of cool it. for you, too, because, like, with your dad, you know, obviously being on tour and stuff, like, that's kind of probably where you want to go mm-hmm. in with Falset. And uh, you kind of get, like, a preview of what that life is consists mm-hmm. of yeah. right um so you said you've been on tour with your dad so mm-hmm. like what are some of the experiences like good and bad that you've kind of had going through that i don't know like it's it's just cool to see you know how every day is just like you got to figure it out like there's all there they always are running into problems on like huge scales like yeah. there's ten thousand people that expect a show mm-hmm. tonight mm-hmm. and we show up in brazil and they don't have the right power for the whole show oh that's nice. and then do. You're right <laughs> like yeah and, and, and who do you blame <laughs> who do you look at to blame right so it's just cool seeing like them and their awesome team solve all these huge problems like on the spot within the matter of hours um, it's been cool to be a part of the Dream Theater family's lives, going out to birthday mm-hmm. dinners and yeah, going out, um, you know, drinking beers with the guys and having late night talks on tour buses. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's just I don't I can't name, you know, one or two things that have happened, but it's just been a whirlwind of cool things that have happened on like life tour. experiences yeah, 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 yeah that's cool and yeah. then like when it comes to your family like your dad probably was away a lot i'm sure mm-hmm. so like that's like so i always wonder like how does a rock star like have well, a family and be on the road mm-hmm. and like you know what i mean well, so wh- what i was talking about earlier is um you know like i people get get into being a musician and they want to be a musician but they don't really know scheduling they don't know what it takes they don't know Sacrifice. what it's all about yeah so that's one thing i think a lot of people just don't understand it's like you're not like gone 12 months of the year or even 10 months of the year like maybe some musicians are but yeah. hardly ever like it's you know you're gone for a couple of weeks and then you're back for a couple mm-hmm. of weeks you're you're gone for four weeks and then you're back for four weeks it's like give and yeah. take right yeah. so I don't think that I had my dad home any less than someone that has a dad that works a nine to five job. That's true. Hmm. Right. It's just Actually, like I get him true. all at once for a few months and then he's gone for a few months. And and when I was a kid, I did miss him for those few months. But yeah. then you enjoy your time with him way more when he is back. Yeah. And you value it more. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it is. It's cool. That cool is way true. to look at it. Yeah, that's actually a really cool way to look at it because, I mean, like, distance makes the heart grow fonder. So, you, mm-hmm. yeah, you really are present in those moments with him, I'm sure, mm-hmm. when he's home. So of course. So, that makes it yeah. even more special. Makes it really exciting, of course. Whereas some people, you know, they have their family home all the time and... You don't appreciate They're it. They're just sitting you watching TV. Nobody's time. talking. Nobody's chilling. Everyone's on their phones. Yeah. yeah. We're all glued to our phones these days. Yeah. yeah. That's all it is. It's crazy how perception changes everything. Yeah. It's wild. For sure. Yeah. Um, you always do that at the same time as me um okay so talk about like (laughs) (laughs) oh my god it was molly okay wait can you fast forward Um, a bit just want to get to the end (laughs) oh my god what is that she doesn't have her glasses on so she can't see um (laughs) i i mean i I could tell you it was was um, mika's new movie that's coming out yeah me ca- <laughs> <laughs> oh spicy oh man spicy. maybe we'll just like edit that like beside us like on the screen yeah somehow. we could definitely do that um <laughs> i was thinking of getting houdini you just like put it right here houdini <laughs> wow wow something like that um thanks for that how long were you just holding that there i've been holding that in for so long no one noticed that. <laughs> I, I have no I, idea, I no idea what's going on. I can't see anything, mm. so I'm like, yeah, dicks just everywhere. Oh, 
Oh, oh, nice. Porn. Amazing. Yes, that's yeah. what I guessed. Yeah. So one of our uh, sweet friends that's sitting in the background was just playing porn. That's all that was going on. Just fantastic. No um, so Chance, tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Keep the ball rolling. Moving on. Moving on. Yeah. Um, so how did your dad impact your, your right path to the sweet stuff she's like fuck the porn let's get course, back into it of course i want to talk music man i want to talk i want to talk <laughs> um, well, how, um how did he impact like yeah like did he in in any terms of like benefiting like you know your path and like just being able to teach you and what what was the most valuable thing that he taught you throughout like, i've been asked this before and i think the answer i gave is like a, a good one so i'll just say that one again um he said <laughs> use recycle <laughs> yeah 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 um and it shouldn't change right in like, all aspects yeah yeah but uh he's he just said like it, the words are so true everyone's said it before but like whatever you do in life you got to put 110 percent mm. into it yeah and i i take that so like seriously to this day with anything i'm doing not just like with the music that i'm doing but like anything i set out to do i'm like okay 110 percent has to go into mm -hmm. this yeah so yeah. important and it's so true and i agree yeah there's a there's a book i forget who the author is called the the 10 times rule and it's always literally giving like instead of always giving an extra 10 times more the effort for every single thing that you put in you will see so even if you do if you do get an outcome that's a little bit less than what you were set out for, it's like at least you're getting more. I, I don't know how to explain it. There's a whole you, like- you put 10 times more exactly. into it in the so first no place. No matter what, you're always gonna get more than yeah. what you first set out for. Of course. You know? And as long yeah. as you like, you know, do your best, like this is the thing, like even with the podcast again, like at first we're like, okay, like we're gonna go all in, we're gonna get the right setup and you know, like- It's gonna be perfect. Yeah, it's and, be and you-, you <laughs> you learn from your mistakes right mm -hmm. like that wasn't us not putting 110 percent in but like look at us now like even like two three months later the level of content like the quality the audio everything has improved so much but you just learn from like you know mm -hmm. put 110 percent in the beginning you're gonna learn from your mistakes you're gonna no see ways. where you go wrong and you're just gonna continue to you know get better so it's little flaws no matter what you do right it's about yep. what you do and how you how you work with them right I remember and develop from there and i remember we were talking about your music in specific like she was like oh shit like there's so many things that i wish i didn't put out in the past like the first songs i wrote i thought they were so <laughs> good and they were so <laughs> trash but it's like but that's how you evolve right yeah. so you got to put shit out like i'm sure you, you can gotta, relate to that you got to yeah. yeah or else you're just going to be sitting mm -hmm. on songs and never release them and then years go by mm -hmm. and you never release stuff because you're always going to get better right you're Your always, sound's gonna always write, changing always yeah evolving as and the next song is always going to be better than the one before mm -hmm. so if you just start putting them out right away then you can start to build a foundation yeah, a fan so base true. so true your music gets better your fan ga base gets better just did all you, goes up did you ever release anything solo before you started the band no we just like falsett had some songs that came out during high school mm -hmm. that uh aren't really a part of our discography now because yeah. mm -hmm. it wasn't like officially released so we're happy to like bury all that stuff yeah mm -hmm. yeah you know where did the name falset come from yeah it's a great like, question. that's a great question <laughs> that's a good one i have no idea <laughs> really no idea why why do we always do that shut up get out of what my are head. you guys i was trying really? to fist bump yeah. you bro <laughs> you're just gonna leave me hanging like oh that. my <laughs> god stop fighting you oh my god <laughs> but no so i um i was listening to this other band um just you know not even looking for a band name and he's british and he said um false false it. british yeah he british. said false eyes and it sounded okay. like falsette and i'm like what does that mean false eyes false eyes <laughs> I, I don't hear it i don't yeah, hear it i'll play for you after i don't want to say false the band name i don't want to say the false band it. name <laughs> but yeah so i just heard so false set and, and then it. i'm like that's a cool word um and then I looked, I looked it up, and it has like a, a music definition. It's like the tone of an instrument is what the oh, definition cool. is. Oh, cool. Wow. Specifically horn instruments, which we're not like a horn band. We have some horns in, in our songs here and there. It's different. But like st still, I'm just like, you know, you need a two-syllable, one-word band name. That was always mm, my thing. Two cool. syllables because you, you can chant it like da-da. Da, da, oh wow yeah. okay, okay i was thinking so deeply into yeah. it yeah that's as, um, as you should though yeah that's a great way and to i, look at I it, didn't yeah. like those like three word bands like you know I, I i never liked that i like just one word um so that was it and then i'm like hey guys what do you think about this name and they're like i love it yeah. and then we started no, a high sick. school and band you know what? your voice is also an instrument it like kind of falls into yeah. everything mm -hmm. yeah band consists of instruments and like the vocals yeah. and um, i just i like it because it's unique right it's like what it is, is that right it is yeah. i was very curious to ask you what the name mm -hmm. meant that's funny. um i've always wanted to start a band man that's like a huge dream if i have like extra time on my hands have you thought about band names ever 
That's a great question. Not really. No. Nikki I've always, and the girls. I've always thought about what I would name my band, but I actually never went in depth to like what I would name it. We've been real, calling her Nikki lately. I don't know why. I don't know like, where it came from. Nikki. Vicky, we it's Vicky, but then we're like Vicky Nikki. You know what? <laughs> Nikki, Nikki, Nikki and the girls. Nikki and the falsettos. Ooh. There you go. There you go. Let's, let's go. I literally posted on my collaboration. Like, I want to start a band. So many people were like down, down, down. And I was like, let's do it. Like, what are we waiting for? Do you know what? I could learn an instrument. We could be. You could do anything honestly, you want in this 100%. world. Hundred percent. Let's dude. start a band. Why are you That's sleeping it. on yourself? You know what? I'm gonna put hundred ten percent in this. I'm gonna go take lessons tomorrow. We're gonna start a band. <laughs> let's go. There you go. Let's yeah. go. What yeah. do you want to learn? Drums. The trombone. Let me just do the triangle in the back. No, that's the hardest instrument. Yeah, I mean. Is it actually? No. No. Probably not. I thought I maybe know. there was some deeper like no. thing to that that actually you like You got to get that actually. one hit perfect, <laughs> right? Um what's your what's your dream instrument if it wasn't the drums? What would you love to learn? To learn? Uh well, probably guitar. I don't know. Really? It would also like guitar you still like know? with your hair, know? man? Like do you still know? <laughs> you know, like just like an I don't know. I I honestly shirt off, <laughs> sweating. <laughs> Do you still no. know how to play? Yeah, yeah, I can still play but chords you learn, and like, campfire expert tunes. Level is yeah, I, I wouldn't, I don't want, I really don't want to. You don't. But want to if play. it wasn't drums, it'd be guitar mm. or bass. I Actually, really I feel like bass. As a guitar player. I'm gonna change my answer. Bass guitar. Bass. No. Locking it bass. in, Howie. There we go. All That's right. my answer. Final answer. Damn. All right. No. Bass. The bass is freaking cool, man. Yeah, and it's like drums and bass sort of like go mm-hmm. together. It's rhythm 100%. section, right? 100%. So. Yeah, yeah, very rhythmic instrument. Yeah, you should have started with that answer. That would have made a lot more sense. Fuck. <laughs> you fucked up. Can we redo it? <laughs> <laughs> Cut. <laughs> start over. Um, so, like, growing up, like, uh, um, what kind of music, like, how how did you get into your genre? And what did you, like, end up listening to growing up? Um, some of your inspirations. I liked Muse a lot. I got into them. My dad showed me them. Uh, surprisingly, One Republic. I loved One Ooh. Republic. System of a Down. <laughs> What's I, I that? They're a metal band. They're Ooh. awesome. Um, S- System of a Down. Um, I got into Corn a bit later. Uh, what else? Uh, I got into like the whole like metalcore and hardcore scene mm, cool. in high school, just because like that's what everyone cool. was listening yeah. to when I was in high school. Have you ever been at emo night, Sneaky D's? Mm, I don't know. We've played Sneaky D's. I don't know oh, what night sick. it was on. Well, like I feel like you really appreciate emo night. Yeah. It's on a f- every Friday night. Shout okay. out Sneaky D's. Um, so it's like 2K rock, like punk rock, metal, mosh yeah. pits everywhere. Oh, I'm yeah, in yeah. that shit. It's yeah. so yeah. fun. You know what? I went to my first mosh pit. Right? Like yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, what we yeah, played. Yeah. So fun. It, you feel like the floor is about to fall. Yeah. <laughs> it was probably an emo Scary. night we played on. I don't know. Is it like bands? No, or is it well, music? Just they like might have bands on certain nights. Okay, but we played on like a band like, night kind of thing gotcha. there a couple times. Super sick. Someone pushes yeah. me like in the fucking mosh pit. I'm pissed. Like <laughs> yeah. that is not my vibe. So, I will come as a friend and I will support. But if I get fucking rowdy in that circle, I'm gonna get pissed. I got a terrible injury in a mosh pit once. Mm. It was at the That's Opera fucked. House in Toronto. Love the Opera House. I was so seeing uh, Periphery. And then I got like knocked over and two guys, two guys got on each side of my leg and just like moved my leg a certain way, tore my meniscus, Why are you copying me meniscus, <laughs> tore my meniscus, meniscus, got a hairline fracture and my knee has never been the same. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I, your patella. I heard hairline fracture and I was like, yeah, it's another, it's isn't that a noodle? Uh, I don't know, but I know <laughs> kidding, it, it is kidding. another word for, for knee. Yeah. I, I yeah, heard yeah, hairline yeah. fracture and I was like, whoa, wait, he fucked his hairline up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. Yeah. Jesus I was like, God, Christ! Someone fucked his hair, ripped his hair out. That would not have been good. No, but oh. no, it was it was the most painful thing ever. I can imagine. Went right to the hospital after that. Oh. Did you say the, the rest the of the show? No. Oh, okay. oh no, no, no! I was in excruciating pain. Oh my! God. I thought I broke my knee. They were like, it's actually more painful than a knee break. Again, maroon. <laughs> Don't go. In, I I've never set foot in a mosh pit since. Ever. Really? I I feel like I've been more courageous with it um, recently. I'm kind of like down. I'm down fun. for the vibes. Go I for it. Uh, I was out with a friend and they took me to the, like his friend was performing some like punk kind of. It was like a mosh pit. Everyone was pushing each other. I've never seen that shit. Like you have to understand. <laughs> I grew Alien up in the, in the fucking sticks, and like your typical like blonde bimbo bitch. I <laughs> I don't want to even put. I don't want to label myself as that. But anyways, I I was like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> Um, if, <laughs> if I get, I was like, I was like this on the side. I'm like, looking at everybody. I'm like, can you absolutely not come near me and do not fucking touch me? Like, I, mm-hmm. I, I, I just, yeah, I wasn't, I did not belong there. So I will come to sneaky tees. Tees. So close. So close. All right. Jesus. Sneaky D. It rhymes. 
And uh, but see, yeah, I'm gonna see, if there's like a high we'll spot where I bar. can sit. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll be yeah. at the bar. That place is actually so sick, man. Mm-hmm. I love. I've had the, some of the best times at Sneaky D's. Yeah, good times. Super sick. It sounds like a cool, yeah. like Sneaky D. Sneaky D's. Yeah. Sneak have you been? No. Slither wow, we're sneak. going tonight. Are you? No, are you we actually? are. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Right. Say no more. No. Are you ready to go to Sneaky D's? I'm not actually. Do they have anything going on on Tuesdays? Mm, I don't know. We need um, a guy. So Joe Rogan has like a guy that like looks up his shit. Mika could be that guy right now. But like Joe Mika. Rogan has a guy that like look Googles his shit yeah. as he's like talking, like yeah. fact checks. Yeah, we need his, a guy that does that. What's his name again? We got to bring a guy on the team that does what's that. What's his name again? Who? On Joe, Ro- Joe Rogan. Like, uh, you ever listen to a podcast? Oh, the guy that's always yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's on the side, yeah. yeah. I don't Slit. know. All right. um, so you need a guy that's like Sneaky D's Tuesday. He's on it. Like fucking fact Jamie, checking that Jamie, shit. Jamie, Jamie. So I was like, Jamie, can you look that up? Jamie, no. <laughs> yeah, we, we need we need Cole. We need Jamie. Cole, can you pull that up, please? <laughs> no, it's got to be Jamie. It's got to be Jamie. <laughs> Jamie, um, uh, that's funny. <laughs> I like uh, that. Cole's in the background right now. Like, what? Do they need something? <laughs> there was an episode where we actually came out. Every, we were being we were being so ridiculous. Like, wait, because every you, single you episode me? again at that time we were referring to Joe Rogan. I don't know what. Like every About time. Yeah, he's sort of like the king of this sort of field, right? Hundred percent. Yeah, like yeah. I wish we could be like, hey, can you bring a scotch out, please, on the rocks? Yeah. I would not drink it, but bring a scotch Have you out, seen please. His table, he's got like scotch all over, his cigars. He's lit, man. It's like cool little knickknacks love, all over the table. I love how he's a balance of like seriousness and he has like some up upbeat, like you know. Joe Rogan's unique because he has like, um, he's like this UFC fighter, like very manly man, mm-hmm. but he has this like unreal vulnerable side to him mm-hmm. and i think that's like yeah. what portrays to both people 100 B- percent. both both people yeah he's, <laughs> anyways he's real uh, yeah he's I a real dude yeah, yeah. Um, he says it like it is that's mm-hmm. it you oh know? you know what his podcast set up like not shitting on him but it's nothing like special and the guy's like signed 100 million dollars on spotify that's yeah. nuts yeah. crazy like, his his setup's nothing like spectacular you know what i mean like he just he's in but this it's like all about the content you're putting out and yeah, the conversations exactly. you're having mm-hmm. right um yeah he brings on a lot of valuable valuable guests and talk about some real shit and that's hopefully what we can do with and ours. they just like yeah. talk about yeah. whatever i think you, know. you guys will yeah you guys have what it takes that. i can't wait to reference back to this episode when no. we do clip it yeah. clip you know what? It. i feel very confident with our podcast skills yes. so like so far like Settle i feel down, like we're just really? no, no i i mean <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not scared <laughs> to say it you know if you ain't rocking Sorry. with us Gotta turn it off fast. i don't i literally don't care 100 percent. we've said that but um yeah, yeah some people just don't see the vision yet and that's fine you know what you don't want to listen don't listen so how far into your um career with your band did you start to finally see like some results and like feel like you know what we're actually doing this like we can do yeah. it what was that like um, moment i feel like when we dropped our first album so we dropped an ep in 2018 mm-hmm. our first like debut album like serious release was in 2020 which isn't that long ago it feels like forever ago yeah um that album it had a, a song that w- did good on radio throughout the states called give that song did good listen to it today really? yeah we were bumping yeah. it um bumping it. I, and then like i don't know just like the str- like we went from like no streams basically to like oh, all these str- like well, instantly from zero streams yeah. to like four hundred thousand streams a year that's nuts and then the next year was 600 and then the next year was a million like it just keeps going up but like that year was just like what's going on i think we have something special people fuck with our music it's good it. music um and yeah we was because it sorry no no uh, i was just gonna say because it was still the during the pandemic we hadn't really been able to like go out and see what the reaction was live mm-hmm. which sucked mm-hmm. but now since then we have like last year was our craziest year yet because on top of dropping our second album we were able to tour with two amazing bands one being dream theater and then the other being intervals so we did these two tours which were the craziest shows we've ever played um and Uh, then yeah that was cool to watch yeah yeah and the most the most streams we've ever had were last year so the i don't know just seeing the trajectory go in the right Mm -hmm. in the right way Mm -hmm. right was yeah. that with all the original band members still when you first started to kind of like pop off a little bit uh no like oh, okay. e- even like when we dropped our first ep it wasn't like the original members yeah, but it's crazy. like technically when you talk about the original members to me that's like who did you drop your first stuff with mm-hmm. so I, I guess that counts as like the original members but yeah no um me and zach um and riley have been there since the debut album it's awesome so yeah, yeah. it's the core of the band yeah cool Love that. Yeah. so when you find like obviously i'm sure it's stressful like people drop out of the band and you got to find a replacement mm-hmm. like that's like 
I'm sure stressful in the sense of like your music's your baby. So like, what's that process kind of like? Uh, it's it's not fun, but it's also exciting because it's like who you know like who are we gonna get? Like what's yeah. what's this gonna be like? What's this new dynamic gonna be like? Um, but there's like just a ton of drama behind why we've had to you know replace certain members. Yeah. Um, it's it's never really been like someone's left us. It's been like hey we we have to part ways now yeah. because of what's tea. happened. <laughs> the band T. yeah so geez yeah that's wild um so what are your like you know we're starting a new year like what's what's in store for this year like what are you guys chasing after what are your goals for the year well we're working on new songs already we have a new single um called naked truth that's coming out okay. in like early spring early summer um, around then we don't have a release date set yet April 1st my birthday that's a great <laughs> release date yeah <laughs> well we'll say we're dropping it April 1st and then on April 1st we'll be like, just kidding you. Yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> all right well <laughs> 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 okay well like say it's March 1st and then fucking put it out April 1st I don't well know. that doesn't work it's not April Fool's that's not the point yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, anyways <laughs> anyways okay. uh what was the question oh yeah what are we working Your on this year plans. yeah Let's so go. uh plans, we actually there. just bought a school bus guys oh it's a little tour bus eh? yeah yeah full-size Vibes. school bus so Vibes. we're renovating that's like our that's everyday project right now which is super exciting it's all the boys out on a farm working on ripping apart a school bus <laughs> that's and nuts. putting it together we have no idea what we're doing so we got a couple guys out there that know so what they're sick. doing so, so yeah. we're sick. and that another part of that that's cool is that we're getting a ton of content out of that yeah probably this week if not next week um we're gonna start putting out videos on like That'll the happen. renovation TikTok? yeah TikTok, yeah 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 like just like filming the whole like process of that mm -hmm. could like get you so much attention you know what i mean it's mm -hmm. crazy the stupidest things go viral that's not stupid that's super <laughs> sick but i'm saying like the stupidest shit goes viral so no, i mean I know, like yeah. i'm sure yeah. people would be like wow this guy's turning a school bus into Mm -hmm. tour bus, bus. Yeah. Lit. Fucking yeah so sick man i've always wanted to buy a school bus yeah well Just when it man. when it's done we'll uh come pick you guys up and go for a little Let's, rip yeah. somewhere beep, beep. go down yeah. the coast Same yeah. Studios. yes hell yes, yeah yes, yes, yes. but then the plan with that is every time we've had like a tour before we waste so much we don't make money we waste so much money on hotel rooms and like renting transportation it's yeah. ridiculous yeah so we figured within like five tours this tour bus will start to pay for itself because mm. we'll have a place that we can you know cook groceries a place where we can sleep a place where all our gear fits in like it's going to be it's going to solve oh, so well, many organized. issues so many issues so yeah. it's worth the, the plan yeah mm -hmm. it's so so worth the investment the plan with that is to get down into the states and start to uh tour down there and really get big down there mm -hmm. um which we're excited that we just signed with a new agency down in the states called Congrats. paladin artists cool we were with a different agency for the past um year and a half but some screwed up stuff happened mm -hmm. there like their vp left the company and then our agent that was with them went to a different agency but he wasn't allowed to bring any of his clients mm. that he was the agent for yeah, sure. so we were sort of just left in the dust with this company that's all up like in fire yeah. pretty much and yeah. um right away we heard from platinum artists and they're like yeah we'll take you guys on amazing so we're we're like hoping that is a good mm -hmm. relationship that yeah. we just signed on with that's crazy too like i think everything happens for a reason you know what i mean Always. like yeah. each connection leads to the next kind of thing mm -hmm. and um yeah that's awesome the states mm -hmm. will be huge for you guys it's like cool mm -hmm. to and i know like um miko was explaining to me that like your dad's band's like brick really big in south america do you like find south that that's the same thing for you too our biggest market is the states right okay. now so they're already our, our top streamers and then then it's canada i'd say and then yeah you got like all those big metal markets like europe and south america mm -hmm. and asia right which is cool like just going on like spotify for artists and scrolling down and seeing like what countries we're in how many people listen yeah. to us in those countries yeah. it's like what the analytics yeah. go crazy yeah that's yeah. cool yeah. Yeah, yeah, I feel like in, like Indonesia and those countries are really big into that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Which I was just there. It's so cool. That'd yeah. be a cool place to tour. Nice. Yeah, like um, yeah, like Bali, all those Bali, places, yeah, right? Yeah. So beautiful. So yeah, yeah, that's it's not sick. a bad place to be. Yeah, I really want to go there someday. Yeah, you yeah. will. You know what? There's yeah. like so many. Um, I hope. <laughs> there's a there's a beach club there called Savaya. Savaya. Uh, yeah, look it up. So yeah. like. I mean, I don't know what kind of like genres they do, but that place is like nuts. Like if you could do like a performance there or something like their music, just in general, like all the places that they perform is wild, Yeah. which I was surprised because you think like, I don't know, you think of Indonesia, you think it's a little bit run down. You think these places aren't as like, nah, 
they got they know what they're doing yeah well you know what I mean? all of those kind of countries they still have fucking every artist and every band going to them and yeah. playing them yeah when i was there jason derulo was at savaya really mm. not like the night jason i was derulo. there but he, yeah he was there like five minutes so it's like damn yeah. what happened to that guy man didn't he know. just like he fell off for a bit but like i'm pretty sure he just had that like huge tiktok hit like yeah a year he's ago. like big oh, on yeah, tiktok yeah, now yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. crazy yeah. wow man T yeah. major T. Do you guys so like for your socials? Um, you, are you guys on TikTok? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you are. We're so like lazy right now with social media. That's another thing this year that we're gonna start to work on is um Zach, our singer. He's always been into video, mm-hmm. um, and editing and stuff. So he's just like, you know what, dude? We we've, we've talked about it enough over the years. I'm just gonna dive straight into mm-hmm. it. So he's like sending me new videos every week that we're just banking on. Mm-hmm. And yeah, this year we're really gonna start to attack um social media on yeah. all fronts. And as you grow too, like I think, um, I mean, a lot of like successful business people that we've spoken to recently, like I think a big piece of advice they've given us is just like taking the time to build a team of people, right? Because mm-hmm. as, as you, I feel like, you know, you hire people to do those things that you don't have time for and maybe you're going to like be lazy on. Being good at delegating. Social media is like a important. fucking thing on its own, you know Dude. what I mean? To run like TikTok, it's YouTube exhausting. shorts, yeah. like all this it's stuff, it's nuts. Yeah. Yeah, um, I truly, I truly don't think that anyone can really do anything without a team mm-hmm. behind you. You know, mm-hmm. like I've myself, like I've tried doing so many different things, and it's always, you know, it's it's so difficult taking on one thing by yourself. You can't, you can't do that. You can't, you can't do social media management. You can't create your content. You can't produce everything you want to produce yeah. on your own. Yeah, right? you're stretching um, yourself way too thin, absolutely, right? Absolutely, man. Yeah. You get burnt out very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I realized that with music is like I, I never really had a team behind my back i'd work with producers here and there but it's like i never really had a core group of people that had my best interests at heart and really were right. focusing on all aspects of like building me in, as an artist mm-hmm. but with this for example like the podcast it's like you have people who do production and behind the scenes it's like i feel such a drastic difference between right. my music career versus this when you have people behind you it it's makes wild. yeah such you're a able to man. focus on what you really yeah, need to focus 100%, 100%. on 100 mm-hmm. percent. i think not only that too is just like when you involve other people um obviously it's hard like for me like i'm such a perfect perfectionist so it's really tough for me to trust people to mm-hmm. like wear the hats that i you know i'm like nah i can do it better than you kind of thing but like just because you know you care so much more mm-hmm. but at the end of the day like having those people behind you it really elevates and mm-hmm. pushes you because those people are also depending on you to perform and yeah. like produce right and so you're gonna grow together yeah yeah, right? yeah. um and the more you do allow people and give people that trust to to do the things that you want to take on and just put it in their hands i feel like you build more relationship where it's like you can you can tell them what you like and don't like and they're gonna eventually like pick up on what you want to do and exactly. you're just, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's all gonna it, flow it never pays off to like try to be the perfectionist and then control everything I've learned and that this yeah. Year. yeah you sort of just Truly. like you know what it, it's it's good it works it's serving the purpose mm-hmm. like do it and you're just gonna Great. grow mm-hmm. that's it yeah i think overthinking just ruins everything to be <laughs> honest <laughs> tell, tell me about it <laughs> tell me I'll about it um so with like all of this i mean we talk a lot about mental health i i mean it's something that we always like to touch on just because i feel like again that's something behind the scenes that people don't really talk about like when you're especially when you're grinding day in and day out and like i think watching everyone around you kind of take the safe route too Mm -hmm. like i think that's such a great topic to touch on because there's a lot of comparison you know what i mean we log on social media you see everybody that went to university and they're playing this out the safe route you know what i mean they got their families going the house going and then we're out here grinding hoping that something works Mm -hmm. do you feel like i mean i'm sure you feel that too and can relate that your mental health can be affected by seeing everyone else kind of know what they're doing and we're out here like grinding hoping that you know yeah but like what i so when i first got out of high school and i was still doing this like i'm still doing this music thing but yeah i would i would have people come up to me at parties and stuff and they'd be like are you still doing that little band thing and stuff Mm, yeah it was just very condescending but i feel like the more i stick with it and the more that you know we grow and the more that people see like oh it's been this many years and they're still doing this thing i feel like i've you know those people they respect it more and more as time goes on to the point where it. now they're they're sitting there like oh i have That's this degree I'm now yep. i'm i'm doing what i'm supposed to be doing and i'm not happy and i'm not fulfilled and then they'll they'll look at me and probably feel the same thing that i feel looking at them mm-hmm. so funny. that that yeah. sort of just keeps me driven it's like hey i'm living the life you probably want to live yeah or i'm, yeah. Tr- I'm trying to live the life you want to live that yeah. you're not brave enough to try and chase Mm -hmm. right i think it builds a lot of self-confidence too when you actually stick to something you know what i mean like for Mm -hmm. us like it's crazy but like when you have all the chaos going on in your life and you have that 
one thing to like just work on and build and rely on like it definitely i would yeah. say helps yes. and that's something health. i've oh, actually i was gonna touch up on something else but um, go for it just like just like wearing the hats in all fields i feel like i've honestly music's been a part of my life since i was a baby like I, as long as i can really remember and i've um i really dove into this whole podcasting like literally 110 percent, and it's like you can notice such a big difference of things changing around you and and the work that's starting to come to life when you really give something your full attention and mm -hmm. really give it your all mm -hmm. right like with mm -hmm. music it's like oh i wanted to do music full time but i wasn't i wasn't committed to that because there was no again no team behind me and i'd mm -hmm. always want to do other things on the side and it's like with this i feel like i've really put a pause on music and you notice such a difference, man, when yeah. you put it all, when you put well, it you, all in. And I can tell, again, like I can tell you guys have put 110% into this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the production is great and quality is awesome. Like Guests are amazing. Team Guests are great. amazing. Team's great. Guests yeah, your, are great. Your, your group here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> fucking yeah. killer. What do you got it over there? <laughs> I can't see it. Can I someone she, tell me? I wish he had one of those signs. It was like applause. Like, did you guys oh. Say that? I don't think I've said it once. What is on what is on he, the screen? He, he has a thing that says it's lit. He's chirping. Oh. He's chirping. Don't He's be fight, a, fighting don't, words. Don't hate the player, just hate the game, brother. <laughs> <laughs> don't hate me cuz you ain't me. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Don't hate us cuz you ain't us. Yeah, you guys us. leave all this in, right? This is all. Yeah, oh okay, yeah. Okay, okay. We don't give a shit all awesome. goes. I, I like mean it. like we had our one time we had the camera guy like crawling across the floor with Gabe. You don't have to do that, man. Like Just everyone knows. Like, no yeah. stress for that. No stress, brother. Like you don't have to crawl around the floor like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Do you find that you you have this pressure to succeed within a certain timeline of your life? Like for example, like by the time you're thirty, if you're yeah. still not where you wanna be, like yeah. are you still gonna proceed or like what's what's your mindset? I turned twenty five this friday mm. Ooh, happy birthday i knew your birthday was in january yeah 25 so quarter century thought, man yeah. welcome to the club it's scary wait wait wait, wait. what's your sign I've, uh he's obviously I'm not sorry a, i'm an asparagus <laughs> <laughs> i haven't heard that i love like asparagus that. yeah, yeah. So, uh, so what are the quality aquarius. traits of an asparagus I don't, uh, aquarius Ooh, I, don't I don't know like aquarius men God usually damn whoa it. there's a first for everything what though. a hater right. you know what you don't seem like an aquarius <laughs> really? i think aquarius men are nice I, to be I, honest, I, I, I know nothing about Aquarius. Why am I talking? I know nothing about Aquarius people. Like, like, do you, <laughs> nothing. Do, do you yeah. like shut I, down when you're upset or do you talk about your feelings? Oh, completely shut down. Really? Okay, yeah, see, I knew that. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's is, that why you don't, is that why you don't like Aquarius? Mark? I don't, I, yeah, I don't want to shut that experience with that. Ah. Uh, yeah. Well, anyways, um, okay. you're going to be 25. So what 25, see, yeah. um, which is like, yeah, I, I thought by the time I was 25, I'd be way like way more ahead than where i am but like you said you got to like sit back and be grateful for mm -hmm. what you have mm -hmm. accomplished so mm -hmm. far mm -hmm. so i I, pff, I don't care i i, I do but like i i just keep reminding myself i don't care i don't keep care i don't going. care you know when i'm now it's like when i'm 30 that's when i'm gonna be like hey i better be where i want to be by the mm -hmm. time i'm 30 um and then when i'm 30 if i'm not there I'll, it'll be when i'm 35 mm -hmm. you know yeah Keep pushing. it's true but you gotta enjoy the journey right absolutely that's the best part of it yeah. you're really like you're living in the present moment there's yeah. nothing better than that you know what yeah. i mean grateful to be alive grateful to be here and like that again what we said like that's gonna get you to where you're gonna be yeah. right you um, see like people too i think honestly i think i've learned this year you cannot have expectations mm -hmm. like we could sit here and be like oh like this is gonna take off in six months this is gonna take off in a year um 30 years old i'm gonna be in a porsche and just fucking so financially stable you. but it's fun but to it's think like, like that though right? it is yeah yes. but that's that's the hope that keeps driving you right yeah. but at the end of the day i mean you see people like certain comedians or like whatever they start like blowing up when they're 40 45 mm -hmm. like you don't know when it's gonna happen mm -hmm. and again like it's the uncertainty that keeps you going because mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. you knew like if you were like fuck i'm not gonna make it till i'm 45 you'd probably be like shit like that's such a long time to wait yeah. maybe i'll try something else yeah. you know what i'm yeah. saying well my dad always like reminds me he's like i didn't sign my first uh, deal until i was 27 wow. and then he wasn't like big and doing what he's doing until he's 28 so from the time he was 18 to 28 he just was grinding yeah in toronto what an and he didn't man. he didn't even he didn't have a famous fucking rock and roll dad like mm -hmm. i do like you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. he was so driven, and that that also helps me stay driven. That's, that's you know? cool. What that's a dream! Cool. What a dream come true! Yeah. Man. But that's what you, like that's what happens when you put 110 percent and really, you know, try your best. You're mm -hmm. gonna see results. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you will see. I know what you were thinking. What? You will see guaranteed results. You will see guaranteed results. There was one episode, and like because we sit and we edit it ourselves, 
like we literally were like you know going back play play mm-hmm. play and there was one part where i was like if you watch this podcast you will see guaranteed yeah. results and now it's like I can't you will see a better that. life so every time we fucking yeah, it just brings anyways. me back oh, um yeah what was i gonna say i was gonna say and it's crazy to think that you know how you mentioned about how you know i'm 25 and i didn't think i'd be here i thought you'd be somewhere else and and, and um what's the word uh the fucking word ah shit. Uh, jamie please pull that up <laughs> <laughs> where you you think you're gonna be a little bit more ahead than where you are and it's crazy yeah. to think that like i'm nowhere near where i thought it was gonna be when i'm 25 and it's it's wild to think that when you're 30 you probably still won't be where you i mean maybe not no, right like I, who that's, knows that's the yeah. crazy part about life you're 97 98. No, 98 98 so we're the same yeah we're the same we're a few that's months um, apart. you're 97 it's just like it, it's a wild ride time's man. ticking for you and uh <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> <laughs> so that at the same time, um, <laughs> I had a point. I had an I had an actual point to what I was gonna say there about ah oh, Vic Vic Vic. I do this all the time. Nikki 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 Nikki. Nikki, 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 Nikki. Nikki. That's why it's um, great. You can edit, right? You just, yeah, well, anyway, then you know what? I I like the podcast though because it's authentic. Yeah, at first too. you know what at first this is what we're learning slowly like i think each podcast gets better and better or each episode but at first you're like you want it to be so structured or you're worried about what you're gonna say or like you're worried about like there being silence and uh i was actually on an, on a plane to orlando i was talking to this like 55 year old guy and we were talking about i was like yeah we're in the mix of like making a podcast and he was like you know what i love about podcasts is that it's just so authentic like you're sitting in listening to a conversation like that happens in real conversation there's moments yeah. of silence or you can't fucking think of like what you're gonna say next and that's the that's the part that makes you feel like you're sitting in the room and i was like wow and i think as time goes on for us like we're more comfortable with like who fucking cares what we yeah. say or who cares if i stutter on a word or like mm. at or first we're like it's shit real yeah, yeah it's, again why real. people love joe rogan right like he's just he's real and yeah like there's moments the where silence, he's sitting on his phone you know? for a minute like fucking trying to find something you know what i mean yeah yeah um but that's like yeah i mean we want it to be real so mm-hmm. yeah we don't cut we're not cutting nothing good we're not cutting nothing so if you if you fuck up you fuck up I fucked up. i'll maybe bleep it for you that's as much as i can do yeah. <laughs> so, maybe 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 so no uh, what happens in vegas here Stays, stays in vegas, stays in vegas. Yeah. we'll call it the same podcast hq what are we gonna call it i don't know saint vegas Nah. Why? Nah. Vegas? I feel like it could be a little bit more creative than that. Why Vegas? Because like you know what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So oh. what happens at Saint HQ stays at Saint HQ. Yeah. Yeah. You know what though? You know what's an interesting thing that we didn't even think about too is like you'll have guests on. They're like, I don't like that. Can you cut that out? Can, can you cut that out? And it's like we got to figure that out. Cause like it's not real when you do that shit. You know yeah. what I mean? You want people to come on that are like comfortable with saying what they're gonna say yeah 100%, just not look back make them sign no guess we are that's sign. what i appreciate about you chance yeah. honestly i appreciate like i feel like since i've met you you've always been like you as a person that's set aside from like falsette like you're very genuine you're very kind oh, thank you i can and tell as soon as yeah you like very genuine. very warm-hearted and i feel like you're just like what you see is what you get you guys are way too nice mm. way too nice Aww, to me. Mm. Blush. not in front of the cameras she's she's a little i mean i'm pretty yeah. ruthless but like i always <laughs> I, I i always mean well you know what i mean like yeah. I, i'm very blunt i say how things are but like i i feel like i'm pretty kind and warm yeah yeah, oh, yeah no is. you are she is. you're great she is. great host both of you she is. Like, thank you yeah thanks for, for having me here you're like te- you guys you're you guys. you're like a 9.5 out of 10 like if i 9.5 that's like it? in the sense of i know your tone of voice is pissing me off but <laughs> 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 get out all right it's time we don't don't tolerate grab my bag (laughs) you could just uh smarten the fuck up and just raise it up a little a notch okay speak up all right all right all right sorry um sorry that's a little thirsty but thank you for the seriously thank you for the compliment that means a lot to me now usually see like no one no one ever says anything nice what yes they do yes they do no that's just tons tons of terrible you are fishing in the pond he's my best friend over there right so you can imagine the yeah. shit he's I hear. crazy though yeah. he's i mean crazy. like he's kind of he's kind of one of my best friends things. too and, it, so and we can we could have a whole podcast about oh his friends my what it's God. like being friends with that guy he just <laughs> i don't even want to get all right it. it's stressful holy no. shit some um yeah speaking of i almost uh, oh i was gonna say something that i, I can't say. feel it <laughs> <laughs> what, what? oh my god okay how do you I'm sure, and I, I, I like asking everybody this who has some sort of a platform, but um, dealing with any, like, hate or negative, you know, comments towards you, how do you guys deal with that? Do you how just do you say, deal with the haters? You, yeah, bye? so that's, like, that's a, you know, I, uh, I, uh, 
I don't even know how to start with this, but like when I, we first started dropping stuff, just start. I started to like message hateful comments back and be like, fuck you and blah, blah. <laughs> and, uh, cause it got Ooh, to me, salty. but then a uh, good buddy of mine, Jamie Vendera, he's a vocal coach down in the States. He okay. messaged me. He's like, chance, like that guy sounds cool. Dude, Jamie what are you Vendera? Doing? yeah, he's, he's actually on Mythbusters for breaking wine glasses with his voice alone. <gasps> Whoa. Yeah. Look up that episode, but he, he Jamie, messaged me. Jamie, can you pull me. that up? <laughs> Jamie. Crazy. but so he was like dude what are you? he's like sending me screenshots of my responses and, and them and he's just like what are you doing bro like you should know from your dad you can't give into this stuff i'm like yeah. you're right you're right you're right i look like an idiot too they look like idiots but i look like an idiot like giving yeah, into yeah. it so now i really i don't entertain it i'll read it um i try not to um it doesn't get to me anymore but what it it does get to me when it's about my dad because he's my Ooh. family member Yay. say whatever you want about me i'm cool start talking shit about my dad like fuck you like yeah, yeah. you know what i mean i yeah, don't know what it on is site. i don't know what it is but i just that's I your dad that man shit. that's, that's love. your dad that's love I hate that shit. yeah and that's just being a loving son because i've also <laughs> seen him like fuck yeah, why yeah, why yeah. Why <laughs> why I, I just i've just seen him like deal with so much bullshit over the years yeah. and not you know yeah. like seriously getting to it and i'm like fuck again so when i see more of that i'm like this is a shit that has made my dad feel like that i think you have to be a pretty strong person to deal with like the hate comments because Mm -hmm. like i'm you know what when that comes our way i'll be like shut the fuck (laughs) up i won't i'm just kind of like that but at the same time you think that though you think that you never know right it depends if they get a soft spot like you know and it's sad i think it's sad that it comes with territory yeah i think you're you're no one if you have no haters right so 100 as soon as you see a hater you're like oh Okay, I'm doing something you know, right. Haters you know? are my motivators, baby. Let's yeah. keep it rolling. Well, yeah. also, I mean, um, hmm, lost my train of thought. Mm. <laughs> yeah, there's no one successful that doesn't have haters. No. Yeah. No. And, uh, you know, I'm like, of course, it's going to affect your mental health. There, Like, again, going back to that, like, like if you're putting out music and someone's shitting on your music and maybe it's like an insecure spot, you're like, could have done this better. Someone points out that exact thing you thought. That's where I think, like shit like that like would piss yeah. me off you know what i mean mm-hmm. but um yeah it's like you said you just gotta take it with a grain of salt and 100 you're always gonna have people who doubt you're always gonna have people who don't rock with you like that's just who like doesn't said, fuck with chance fucking labrie i don't know i mean that's <laughs> very very few very few good well, yeah I we hope. better write a list yeah. um so can't think of one <laughs> um <laughs> i guess kind of like coming to an end we always like to kind of ask our guests like what is something what is a valuable life lesson you can kind of take away and kind of give that insight to others you know you have you get one shot this is your mic you're gonna give one solid piece of advice what is it um i've sort of i think i've already like said most of them you know like if if you are listening back to your stuff and you and you suck then stop chasing your dreams and if if you're good then chase your dreams but you got to put 110 percent into it how do you know you suck yeah that's what i was actually thinking the exact <laughs> same thing you got to be honest with yourself yeah but, some but like what if i think i'm really fucking good some, and some people are naive they don't see it they think they're great they think yeah they're great. all right you yeah we put them on the you know what if you if you want to know if your shit's good or not you can email me Okay, and I and I will let you know. That's okay. but no, on a serious note, I that's a great question because people are naive, people have egos, people mm-hmm. think their shit doesn't stink. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Like you just seriously, you got to be honest with yourself. And I was I was half kidding when I was like saying all of that. Like obviously, don't like if you suck, don't chase your dreams. I'm <laughs> I'm half joking when I say that. He's half joking. Half joking. Yeah, half okay. serious though, because like. <laughs> <laughs> I know it comes off harsh, but like, don't waste your time with stuff 100%. you're not good at. Go and find something you're good at and yeah. do that. Yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. honestly, like if if music doesn't work out for me, I'll find something else mm-hmm. that I like doing mm-hmm. that I'm good at. Yeah. And if yeah. it doesn't it's work out for me, I'm gonna be a ghostwriter. Yeah. For for music? Yeah. There you go. For music? Yeah, I'm dead serious. Interesting. I've never heard you write a song. <laughs> oh, I'd love to, to do it. I'd love to hear yeah. it. Well, because she's a ghost writer. So ah, you know. yes. I'm ac- no, I'm actually good at writing. I was always really good you know? at it. But I I think that's what I would do. It's It'd be a sick job. It's important, too, to like have people surrounding you and um, who are honest with you, right? Mm. Like, if, if my shit sucks, I want you to tell me my shit sucks. Because otherwise, I'm just embarrassing yeah, myself. You're, you're, Vicky, 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 like, Vicky, your shit f- stinks. <laughs> yeah, but your friends are the worst people to ask. You don't know What? Oh yeah, yeah, but like that's a good friend though. It's a good friend, but yeah, like yeah, yeah. most friends are gonna be like, oh my god, like I know no, you're no, amazing. No. Like but that's your not friends, what I hear all the your time. family, and your friends do not ask. You, the, okay, 
how do you know if your stuff sucks? You have to go up to 50 different people that you don't know on the sidewalk and say, what do you think about this? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've seen some reels on Instagram about that. It's actually the funniest shit. Because <laughs> then you're going to get an honest... Have you been to New York City? Yeah. You I was see just, the fucking assholes there. with this shit. Like, they piss me off. I'll, huh? I'll just... You know the people that just like try to give you their oh, CDs. I literally oh. was yeah, I was just yeah. handed one while I was there. Yeah, but you know what they do? They're like, and then the I wanna, donation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, I, I don't have I don't have e transfer. Yeah. I don't have anything that no, you're looking for. I have for. no money. <laughs> I have no cash on me, and I don't have my credit card to give I, you the number. To, fuck off. I always just say I'm a broke musician too, brother. Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. you know what? That's a good. That. And then what yeah. do they say? Can I have the CD back? Yeah, <laughs> always. I hand it back. Yeah, they always take it back. Probably shit. So in conclusion, then you think. Don't waste your time. No, well, I no. This is like <laughs> this is terrible. Because like, what's the one advice? Like, I know. You want to change your answer? I'm like, your answer. <laughs> he's not locked. No, I don't. I I like my answer, but it's just like it sounds terrible. Sometimes the truth hurts. It's just like yeah, truth it's harsh. I don't. I th- all grouped into one is what I was saying throughout this whole podcast. 110 percent thing. You have to be good at what you you do. Um, talent is overrated. You have to put in more hard work than anyone else in your field, and I think that's the best advice I can give. Five but you can, you can, you can hear that from advice. any other inspirational person, motivational. Yeah, I know. Speaker. Sometimes the shit sounds cheesy, and you just feel like yeah. I, and again, yeah, yeah, no, I, know. I, I also hate talking from this point of like, oh, I'm, I'm some successful, famous fucking person. Like, no, <laughs> we're, we're doing good, and we're on the right trajectory, and we're getting somewhere. But you know but what? I'm not that guy yet. It's okay, because we say this all the time. We embody, like, we're like, we're famous. You, you want to come in here? Welcome to your five minutes yeah. of fame. Thank you very much <laughs> for coming. I think as soon as anyone podcast. puts the headphones on, it's just, it's like, ooh, who am I? Like, yeah. But you know what? You have to, I think, too, like, a cool part is, like, manifesting is, you kind of have to like believe you're you already, already there exactly. you know like as much as like yeah, yeah logically you'd be like yeah i'm fucking nobody like we were saying that today i was like i have four thousand followers on instagram and i'm like looking at people i'm like mm, you can't produce anything on my podcast get yeah. the fuck out of here <laughs> but i'm like <laughs> yeah i was like victoria we're literally nobodies like, who the fuck are you yeah <laughs> but i'm like i don't give a shit i'm like no, on high on that. life right now no like that. that's how you honestly like mold yourself into that life is like mm-hmm. envisioning yeah. yourself you're already halfway there if that's what you're doing of course you know yeah and i think it's just knowing like and it's not being cocky it's just like knowing you have something knowing special your value you know what i mean like i say like the like energy and the dynamic that we have and like what we're bringing to this podcast like yeah obviously we're small but i know what's special and i know we have something to offer same way you guys are like obviously sick at what you do Thank and you. uh people don't see the vision yet they do for you but i'm saying like you know you'll go farther and farther and farther also before we end this podcast i just want to touch on um your i know you're a really big fangirl over jb so mm. did you just want to mm. like, touch oh, on that justin bieber yeah. shut the fuck up yes justin bieber why are we doing this <laughs> like, come on come is on is this you <laughs> this is him this is him uh no i i uh, i'm not a huge fangirl justin Oof. bieber you put him down so, like that honestly though <laughs> I, I was just excited because i am i i do like justin bieber though Okay. And what is I've it been, about so the I was, that so you like? I was actually on this like radio show thing for South down in South America, Brazil, and and they okay. were asking me questions about Justin Bieber because they're just like, oh, Canadian and Canadian, <laughs> and I'm like, no, guys, like I actually fuck with Justin Bieber. He's good. What is it about him he that is you good. like? Some, like so I, th- I think he's a great songwriter. His melodies are great. His songs are great. His voice is great, and he's a great performer. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, he is. He's unreal. And he's a little cutie. Yeah, people like to hate. Again, if you're anyone, you're going to have haters. So mm-hmm. like, I like yeah. to talk about, like, like we, we do talk about different artists a lot. Um, before we end this, I just I just like having this conversation yeah, for yeah. fun. But yeah. um, what what are some, like, mainstream? Like, let's say, like, we're jumping out of your genre. Mm. Like, what are some, some artists? That mainstream. We- I don't know. Some Post Malone is pretty Ooh, dope. Oh, yep. Uh, for, for me though like i'm in like this metal world right mm-hmm. so like for me mainstream is like bring me the horizon and lincoln yeah, park no and lincoln foo, Fight- sick. foo fighters like three days grace three days grace mm-hmm. yeah. they're good they're good but i'm just like i don't deep dive into their yeah, yeah. they're good though yeah yeah if they listen yeah. to this they're gonna be like fuck, oh, fuck that guy. <laughs> yeah oh nickelback do you like nickelback oh. okay yeah like classic. they're sick classic, well, chris classic. daughtry sure i love chris she, she doesn't fuck with that like it's just like eh. yeah. Home. so who okay well, we'll make this last question i guess maybe if it's not that good we'll, we'll skip it can i ask you why what? the fuck you're making that face 
Yeah, she's not really a big fan. Like, I think he's super talented. I have another don't get me wrong. It's just not my. It's just not my vibe. Yeah, but I think he's talented. I think a, he's a great voice. Yeah, he's got a good song or two. Yeah. Um, what about who, like? Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> we have this tendency where we talk over each other a yeah. lot. We're it's learning. Okay. We're practicing. It's real. It's yeah, real. It's this authentic. What in it's real raw. Life. That's true. Yeah. Um, That's why we all have a mic, right? Exactly. We don't pass them around. Yes. We just this turn. I'll just turn her mic down. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Oh, no. like, Shh. <laughs> um, is, who's yeah. your dream collab? If you guys could pick anyone in the world, you can you can work with right now. Mm, who would it be? I don't know. I, that's I, a big load of question yeah yeah i don't know but i think um something to think about though it's something to chase right? yeah i think uh, like obviously working with metallica mm. would be any wow. metal bands like wow Dream. like they're like the you know the top, top of the top, top you can't beat that so yeah. that'd be cool every kid learning guitar and drums loves metallica right so for any metal head that's made it and in and is in a successful metal band now for them to collab with fucking Metallica. I think that'd be sweet for anyone, Incre- including me. This is very intriguing to me because I'm not like into metal music whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Like I really like your guys' music a lot. Um, I don't know, like I don't even, couldn't name a song by Metallica or have, just, like I don't think I've ever <laughs> listened. But, um, you know, like I'm into like Frankie Sinatra. Nice. Like Frankie Sinatra. Frankie. Total same vibe. I like to call him Frankie. Total same vibe yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I'm, yeah. I'm very into like the classic oldies lately. Yeah. Like really dove into that. No, my, my dad loves that shit too. He yeah, I was going to say. Sinatra. Yeah. You ever like vibe to some Frankie? Oh yeah. Yeah. I love Frankie. Yeah, Frankie. Yeah, Who just, doesn't love Frankie? If yeah, Frankie was still alive, I'd be all over that. Yeah, especially on the holidays, you throw some of Frankie oh. on. Oh wait. Yeah. Yeah. This is a vibe. We were bump. We were vibing to Otis Frankie. Redding, mm-hmm. Nina Simone, Etta James, Billie yeah. Holiday. Wow. Yeah. Rat pack. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the vibe. She's really like recently. I think I've she's like really getting into it. Dove in. Um. Obviously, like I always like loved Elvis Presley and um. Did you watch the new movie? I did, and it was actually incredible. I haven't seen it yet. Neither yeah. No. Like he, we'll that guy. Honestly, it's insane. Like awesome you have right? to watch it. Yeah, it's crazy. Like his acting is insane. Things. It's very long though, so I want to be mentally. I think it's like 170 minute runtime. Really insane. Yeah. It's interesting. That's yeah. insanity. Which I love. I love film, so I'm like amped for it. But at the same time, it's like, God damn, I have to be mentally like. Yeah, ready. yeah that's, that's one I want to watch though for sure. Mm. Well, yeah, yeah, but I've been really intrigued by like that old classic like orchestra type vibes. I, I don't know. I don't mm-hmm. know what it is lately, but yeah, I, I love music in general. So I love like learning. It's very interesting to me. I I don't know why I wasn't gifted with any musical talents because I feel like I would have been. Again, you I know. think Maybe you're talent to do this. is overrated and just, you know, yeah. putting the I hours I tell her all the time, you can learn to sing if you want to, bro. Anyone yeah. can. Both Mika and Vic is like, I've heard you stay on key before. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. I could probably learn. I yeah. think you, you got to train your ear. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. all about putting the work in, bro. I don't, I don't think, guys, I don't think you I record want it. Myself, I'm, one day, I'm going to actually like just go in my bathroom, <laughs> sing a couple one, two. You did that the other day. Don't even lie. I have <laughs> done it a couple times, <laughs> but I've never been confident enough to be like, that's where my, I get a little bit insecure. Little bit so shy. I'm very vulnerable, like especially when it's like something you've always wished you could do. I know it sounds silly, but I'm like, fuck. I get a little vulnerable do, about just it. Just do it. Nothing's yeah. stopping you. I like, don't think I could sing in front of a crowd, honestly. What? Can you sing? Really? Actually, I've never asked you that. Can no. you sing? No, I've tried. Like yeah. you really like don't think you your dad literally can yeah, I'm no, sure I don't, you I don't can think I don't think I got those genes. Really? Yeah. Is that you being hard on yourself or like Probably genuinely? but like I think like you said, anyone can learn mm-hmm. how to sing, but do you do you have a good voice? So. <laughs> Dude, Ed I Sheeran. Like you have a the only thing that gives me hope is Ed uh, Sheeran. No. You gotta you gotta go home, you need to Google Ed it's Sheeran. Crazy. <coughs> you never yeah. think. You never think. I don't know. Like I, th- I think anyone who can play instruments can sing. That's yeah. a fact that I, I think. I could definitely I sing any. and I could definitely like get good at it, but I don't right now I'm not a good singer. Right? Fair I, just, enough. I think no. too it's like you, hmm, you know what it is for me is I have so many things on the go. Where the fuck am I going to find some time? It's like, you really need to invest time into learning that. I will. I just don't know when, like, that priority yeah. can be put in place. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't. That's the thing is, like, there's so many things I want to do. I want to go learn to dance. I want to learn to sing. Yeah. I'm, like, right now, I'm, like, getting really heavy into, like, video editing. And, like, I want to learn animation and all these different cool things. And then you want to, you know, I want to learn hard. three different languages. That's like, hard. I got a lot Easy. of shit on the yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. And we're <laughs> building a podcast. So, yeah, there's I mean, some people out there that do all these things. I'm like, how do you find the time? But then are they successful? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Look at J-Lo. 
she honestly like i know it's like random but like dude that girl has so many things on the go she's so good at so many things like i just watched a documentary the other day maybe that's why it comes to mind but uh it's like you see people like that and then you're like shit but i think yeah. at the i think they got really good at one thing like when you like and when also, you perfect one thing then you can kind of like dive into other what do we say all the time money buys you time Oh, yeah. they can afford to do all yeah, those things exactly like you they know? can pay like the top people from any field 100%. to do whatever they need them Done. to do right and Absolutely. then they can focus on what matters it's mm-hmm. not whereas yeah. if we want to set out to do something like a podcast or like a new project we gotta fucking put in the hard you work gotta hustle yeah. yeah like again like you but don't see rewarding. the behind the grind like it is. for it's us rewarding. like we work how many freaking hours in a bar to like be able to put this yeah. together we'll you come know? to the studio 9 a.m be gone at like midnight yeah. yeah you guys have been here like all day today yeah right. yeah and like the last week well yeah it's been pretty crazy i have had no sleep <laughs> but we want that you know yeah. like we were talking like we want to be sleeping on the couch at the studio like that's that's the thing people don't see but that's the dream it's like sitting here until Eating we shit. get where we want to be like that's the process like eat shit for a year mm-hmm. or two or three or whatever it takes sleep on the couch yeah. Yeah. i'll sleep on the floor and then you know you get back up at 5 a.m you start editing until you freaking finish the project yeah. right it's yep. just like that's how it goes you gotta do what you gotta do right that's life i yeah. uh biggest to end this off i talk a lot but um what did i say to you like we had a little bit of a hiccup a few weeks ago like vic was out of the country and we had some technical difficulties um we pre-recorded a bunch of episodes which honestly like going forward i i actually didn't even really like that because it's not as current like you want it to mm-hmm. be you know like week yeah. to week yeah. um but we thought we were doing the smart thing lesson learned and uh you farting so, over there yeah that's what it sounds like yeah this guy's like dying keep it down uh take it down and not <laughs> but we had <laughs> one episode left and Vic was out of the country and then like we went through it and there was some shit that we didn't notice and i was like dude we need to release this tomorrow and she's like it's okay we're gonna skip this week i was like but there's no room for hiccups like you can't mm-hmm. it's kind of like the way i look at it is like all the production everything that happens like people just see like the content that we put out and it looks crisp and it looks good but they don't see the hours put into it so i was like you kind of have to you have to have those sleepless nights to avoid people seeing the hiccup you don't want people to see right. the hiccup yeah, you know yeah. what i mean but mm-hmm. like 100 yeah, percent. we were we were butting heads on that one for sure right yeah but she was again, like, like we have, that's we had, a learning curve right exactly. there exactly right? and that's what that's how i was thinking like we had content that no one had seen before that we still put out that week on like reels mm-hmm. and whatever um so just because we weren't releasing an episode doesn't mean we weren't making progress and we weren't doing anything that was my that was my mindset that's fair. It, right? and then we were like we we're kind of like yeah we're just starting out like i guess you people won't mean, notice dude? but i was like it's the principle of like people just people fucking appreciate put the it mistakes out. they appreciate the growth yeah, you yeah. know what i mean it's, it's, it's so like, part of the process it goes along with like people love behind the scenes kind of stuff mm-hmm. you know that's like if, exactly it, it's just uh it just goes to show again like how people love real like, yeah it's true it's a true. little stress ball no i'm just like when it comes to like for example like if you're putting out a song like y- like if you're re- you put out a release day like you kind of want to hit that day like i'm, I'm still oh, like very strict on like stuff like that mm-hmm. like i think there's like as you should when be you but guys, there's hiccups you can know? you guys like literally upload same day yes yeah we can we but could but it we, t- we can't like that's the only thing no, that holds you have us to, to a release date yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. We can like, like we if we want to, we do it. We the finish day. this, upload it. We could, but mm-hmm. you have to edit it. You have to have it like perfect. The audio, like everything, right. has to be. Yeah, so it's we a lot try of work. To upload ahead of time, but yeah, and it's yeah, discipline, man. We always yeah. go back to discipline. So but now we're here. We're in the studio like every single day, so um, it's a bit of a different vibe than it was a couple months ago, even. So yeah, I'm always surprised when I see other podcasts. Um, they'll shoot like multiple episodes in one day. And then that'll hmm. go across like five different weeks, you know? I personally, like just from my experience at this now, is like your mind, you get, like you, we could sit here and talk and then like say we had another guest come in. Like I, there's no way I can sit and like have, another have like another great yeah. conversation. Yeah. Like your brain kind of gets fried. So we, we try filmed, to keep we it. We filmed two episodes in one day and it was just a lot. It there's no lot. way we could have done a third. You know what I'm trying to no. say? Like yeah. after two, you're kind of like, okay, like I'm yeah. running out of it's shit like to you're talk forced, about. Yeah, you're forcing yeah. it at that point. Yeah. yeah. But we do want to start recording like, I think eventually we want to do like two episodes a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's um, the plan. But yeah. Like releasing two episodes or record? Yeah. I think record. I think record and then like release. To that's the way week. down the road. But though. it's like, like, that's like, we're taking it. Taking it easy. Yeah. Taking it easy. Well, um, you're doing something right. Thank you, my friend. You as well. So are you, my friend. Thank she you. loves to copy me. Stop copying. You're not even doing it right, bro. <laughs> I don't give a shit. He's my friend. Thank you, my friend. We're all friends here. Oh, Come yeah. We can all be friends. Yeah. Vicky, yeah. you can be a part of the group. You're clan. allowing her to be my friend? Amika, I hate how uninterested you look right now. I could punch you in the head. 
anyways um, this well chance thank you truly from the bottom of my heart um from artist to artist this was inspirational um for sure i'd thank love you. to hear your story i'd love to hear things that you had to say honestly um thank you for coming on here and taking the time to join us today it was a huge honor and um yeah Likewise. i'm excited to see where your musical journey takes you and i'm excited yeah, we're wishing you the stuff. best Absolutely. i mean i will be here through it all i will be and we'll uh, have you back in a year talk about oh what yeah, yeah yeah thanks so much guys like thanks for having me on you guys are great and this is gonna go somewhere for sure happy early I birthday it. thank you so much yeah. awesome. <laughs> happy birthday brother Cheers, 25 guys.